factory, they had a very small turbocharger, no intercooler, so when the turbo gets hot... Hey, this is Mad Max Garage coming to you from Budget Boosting. Alright, today we're going to talk about blow-through carburetor setups. And instead of using props like we did for draw-through, we actually have a blow-through carbureted setup car. 1979 Nissan 280ZX. This turbo kit was pieced together from a lot of different sources. For example, this carb hat. I got lucky and found it on eBay. This uh, Demon blow-through carburetor. It's designed for blow-through application. And the way you can tell is when you're looking for a carburetor, it says blow-through annular boosters. That's the key words you're looking for when you're looking for a blow-through carburetor. Demon makes them. And you can get them through another company called Quick Fuel at Summit Racing. You can find the blow through carburetor made by Quick Fuel at Summit Racing. And they usually round about 700 and some change dollars. So expect to spend a good 700 and some change to get this blow through carburetor. But it's well worth it in the long run because it's easy to tune, it's not fuel injected, so you don't have any sensors to work with, you don't have any computers to worry about, you don't have to have any custom chips built and you can run an intercooler, unlike you can with draw-through boosting, you can run an intercooler because it's blow-through, not draw-through. Blow-through, you're basically just going from the turbocharger to the intercooler, then from the intercooler where it's nice and cold, and into this big carb hat where it goes through this blow-through carburetor, and blow-through carburetors are designed for as boost increases, they automatically provide more fuel with the boost increase. So fuel, for every pound of boost, it gives you more pounds of fuel and more fuel per boost. So as the air gets forced through, it forces those blow through annular boosters to put more fuel in the jets, and i.e. the fuel flow goes with the boost. Now afterwards, once you get this setup all put together, then you start going through the jetting process. In the jetting process, what you're doing is deciding how big a jets you need on your primaries and secondaries. According to how you're looking on your air fuel ratio gauge, your fuel pressure, and your exhaust temperature. And you're monitoring all these temperatures. And if you see them, like for example, running lean on your air fuel mixture, you jet up one or two jets up on your primaries and your secondaries. You always want to be a little bit bigger on your primary jets than your secondary jets, like I talked about in the draw-through carburetor jet video. Now, the difference is blow-through and draw-through. This blow-through setup, you're blowing into the carburetor instead of drawing, going to the turbocharger's inlet. You're blowing through the carburetor straight to the intake with the boost. So the boost is going to meet the fuel and air right here at the carburetor, basically boost, is going to meet the fuel mixture, then get shoved in the intake and through your engine. Now what you need for a basic blow-through setup, I'll go over the components that you need. You need an exhaust manifold so you can bolt your turbocharger to your engine. Basically an exhaust manifold that has a turbo flange on it, or you customize a flange to go onto your exhaust manifold. Exhaust manifold bolts to turbocharger, and then a downpipe going from your turbocharger through your exhaust system. And of course you need your intercooler tubing to go from your turbocharger to your intercooler and then to your intake. You need a carb hat to allow the boost to flow into your carburetor with no leaks in around between the uh, hat and the carburetor. You can't have boost leaking through or else you're going to lose power. You need an intake manifold where you can bolt your carburetor to and it's highly recommended. You need a fuel pressure gauge so you can monitor your fuel pressure. I have one outside here where I can monitor idle fuel pressure. Then I also have a gauge in the cockpit where I can also monitor fuel pressure. Okay. Also, you need your turbo inlet and return lines as well. So, as you can see here, on the side of the block is where your oil pressure sender is normally bolted to. But to get oil supply for your turbocharger, you have to tee it. Have a tee fitting go into your block to receive the oil and also have part of it go to your oil pressure sender. Then in this oil pressure 
oil supply line, which goes from here into the turbocharger on the other side of the engine. That supplies the turbo bearings with the oil you need to spin the turbo and keep it cool as well. There's your oil supply line right here coming from the other side into the turbocharger, into the turbocharger. Then your oil return line, you cannot see it because it's under the car. It goes from under the turbo to the top part of the oil pan and it's tapped into there. So you have your oil going in the turbo and when it gets done lubricating the turbo, it goes into the top of the oil pan and gets recycled throughout the system again, through your engine. And a blow-off valve isn't necessary, but, you know, if you have one, why not? It's kind of a neat little thing to have. I mean, I mean, so many people think a blow-off valve is necessary, but, in my humble opinion, it's not necessary. It's nice. I mean, as soon as you let off your throttle, you'll get the whoosh sound, and it basically relieves your boost when you let off the gas. Without a blow-off valve, it would just relieve itself and kind of dissipate. Blow-off valve just makes it a little easier, lets the boost out whenever you let off the throttle. I'm going to talk about the gauges that you need to monitor your boost so you can decide whether you need to put jets going up to richen your mixture or jets going down to lean your fuel mixture. Okay, here's your exhaust temperature gauge. This probe is right at the turbo flange where it comes from all six cylinders or how many cylinders you have to one. So as soon as your exhaust exits your cylinders, you put that probe right there before it hits the turbocharger or right at the turbo flange and you monitor your exhaust temperature because there's certain amounts of exhaust temperature your engine can safely handle before it melts, grenades, all that bad stuff. Here's your air fuel ratio gauge. Air fuel ratio gauge. Green is rich, red is lean, and yellow, yellow-orange color is stoich, which is right on the money. As you can see right here, I'm pretty much stoich for the most part. Here's your boost pressure gauge, so you can monitor your turbo boost. Anything below zero is vacuum, anything above zero is boost. Right now, I'm just, I'm still in the vacuum side. See, that went into boost a little bit. Anyway, anything beyond zero is boost, below zero is vacuum. Fuel pressure, boost pressure, air fuel ratio tells you your parts per air and fuel. You want to be stoich. And exhaust temperature. And each engine's a little bit different on the maximum amount of exhaust exhaust temperature they can handle without coming apart. But you establish that. You want to find where your safe operating temperatures are and your high range operating temperatures and you want to go a little bit before it so you don't put your engine at risk. You want to establish yourself a high side and say, okay, I'm not going to allow my engine to pass this much temperature. If I start getting there, I need to make some adjustments on my jets. If I'm getting too hot or getting too lean, I need to jet up and go rich on the jets on the carburetor. So those are the basics on a blow-through carburetor setup. Okay, today I talked about the blow-through carburetor setup. And this example here, the 1979 280ZX, which was converted to a turbocharger. I hope you learned something from this blow-through carburetor setup. Okay, I'm closing off now. Mad Matt from Budget Boosting at Mad Matt's Garage. If you like us, please like us on Facebook. And subscribe to our page so you'll see every new video we come out with. And remember, knowledge is power. It's horsepower. <laughs>